Hey you guys, it's Amelia here and thank you so much for watching this video. Today's video is a little bit different. We are going to be talking just a little bit about the theory of dressage. And it's so important to really understand the theory of dressage, why we do the things we do. Dressage is actually a very systematic and methodical form of training. But often when we're riding and when we're first learning dressage, it's really hard to understand the system. When you're in a lesson, when you're on a horse, you need to be thinking in the moment. You need to be thinking about what your horse is doing, what your body's doing, what you need to do. And likewise, as an instructor, when I'm teaching someone, I need to be telling them in the moment, hey, put your left leg on, bend your horse a little more, or go a little more forward. I can't be telling them, you know, well, the theory of dressage and the reason that we do this is X, Y, Z. So it's important if you want to be a good rider, if you want to train dressage horses, that you really, in addition to riding and to feeling and to being in the moment, that you start to understand the theory of dressage. So today we're gonna go over a little bit rider position, the dressage training scale, half halts, and a few other things so that you understand more about the theory of dressage. And if you like this format of teaching, join Amelia's Dressage Academy. What Amelia's Dressage Academy is that it gives you access to a monthly workshop. And the format of the workshop is that you'll get a video with specific exercises to do. You'll get a worksheet and then we'll do a live Zoom call, which is a little bit more of this kind of a lecture format with slides and also a Q&A session. So a chance to ask me questions directly. The Academy is designed for riders of all levels, so whether you're just starting out or whether you're an FEI rider, again, understanding the theory of dressage is really an important piece to making progress in your riding and to being a better rider and a better trainer. And if you can't make the live Zoom calls, it's fine. They will be recorded similar format to this and you can always go back and watch them later. So the first lecture is on contact and connection in the Academy and that is September 15th and September 20th. So be sure to sign up before then. All right, give this video a thumbs up and let's get into the theory of dressage. Okay, we're gonna start this theory of dressage lesson, of course, with rider position. And rider position is one of the most important parts of dressage. The quote is that only a rider in the correct position can make the correct aids. So the position that we ride in allows us to be effective and to have the effect that we want on our dressage horses. So what I found works best for me and for my students is to think of three lines. And if you can keep those three lines straight, then you are in more or less the correct rider position. You'll also notice that it's easy to be in the correct position when everything is going well. So when you're just walking or you're at the halt, it's really easy to get these three lines straight. But when you start going and things get more complicated or your horse is a little difficult and not cooperative, that's when these lines uh, get skewed. And it's important to check in with these lines when you're having trouble with your horse and make sure that your position is correct because when you're not correct, your horse can't be correct. So the first line is the line we all know about, which is the line from your ear, shoulder, hip, heel. And this line is really important for stability. If you are tipped too far forward with your lower leg too far back, which is what I see a lot of riders do, that's going to make you unstable. It's gonna make you kind of like a weed in the wind. So when your horse slows down, you have a tendency to kind of lean tip too far forward. And when your upper body's tip too far forward, it's also gonna make it really hard to engage your horse and get your horse sitting on their hind end which is what we want in dressage. Now, likewise, if you're tipped too far back, what that's gonna do is it's going to kind of drive your seat bones forward into the horse um, and drive your horse too much forward, so that's not a good thing. When you sit too far back, it also causes your heels, your lower leg to go too far forward. And again, anytime that that line between your shoulder 
hip and heel get skewed, you are very unstable in the saddle. So that's line number one. Line number two is a line from your elbow to the horse's mouth. So this is a really important line when we talk about contact, which we will be talking about in the first Zoom call on the 15th. But in order to get a soft and following contact with your horse, you must have a straight line from your elbow to the horse's mouth. If your hands are too high, actually like my hands are a little too high in that picture there, that's going to cause a little bit of tension and stiffness in the contact. And likewise, if your hands are too low, if your arms are straight, that's a big, big no-no. So don't ride with straight arms. When you ride with straight arms, it really creates a lot of stiffness in your arm, which translates into the horse's neck. And then also be sure that your thumbs are up and your palms are facing each other. If you have motorcycle hands, again, that locks out your arms. And if your palms are facing up, that's also going to cause tension in your arms. So line number two is from the elbow to the horse's mouth. And then line number three is your symmetry line. So when you're sitting above your horse, your spine should be perpendicular to the horse's spine. It's really important that you sit in the middle of your horse. Some horses tend to want to push us off to one side or the other. And if you're crooked on top of your horse, it's impossible to get your horse honestly straight. So really make sure that when you sit on your horse that you're directly straight above your horse's spine and not leaning to either side. So that's just the basics of correct rider position. Of course, there's a lot of little intricacies that you need to be thinking about. And of course, following the motion of the horse is a big one. But just in general, when you first sit on your horse, those are the three lines to get in the correct position. Okay, the second slide is about the dressage training scale. And the dressage training scale is such an important part about the theory of dressage. Do you ever wonder when you're having a lesson, like, why does it matter if you ride a perfect circle? Why does it matter if you keep the same tempo in the trot? Why does it matter that, you know, your horse is even left and right? All of these questions are answered by the training scale. And the training scale really is a tool that guides you with your horse through the levels and guides the training and teaches you how to prioritize what's the most important thing to work on when. So the training scale has six levels. The idea is that you start at the bottom with rhythm and work your way up to the top with collection. Now, it's not always like you have to completely master one level before going on to the next, but it just serves as a framework for what to work on first. And then also, if you start having a problem, like if you start having a problem in your collection, to kind of look at the lower levels of the scale and figure out what has fallen apart. So the first level is rhythm. And it's really important in dressage training that we always maintain the purity of the gates and that we enhance the quality of the horse's gait. So horses have a walk, a trot, and a canter. If you train them correctly with good dressage, you can make those gates even better. If you train them badly, you can ruin the gait. So the biggest rhythm mistakes that we see are we see a lateral walk, which is where a horse paces. So instead of having an even one, two, three, four rhythm to the walk, the walk will get like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The best way to maintaining the clear rhythm of the walk is to just leave it alone, to do as little as possible in the walk. Usually when a walk gets lateral, it's from too much tension. So too much, you know, tightening up on the reins too soon with a young horse and then too much like driving them into that contact will create a lateral walk. Although some horses are just naturally more predisposed to it than others. Horses that have a bigger walk are more likely to get a lateral walk. The other gate that you have to be careful about with a rhythm is the canter, because sometimes the canter will get a little bit four-beaded. And when this happens, again, the rhythm, that nice clear three-beat of the canter is lost. In general, a horse that gets a little four-beaded in the canter, you want to just ride them forward, and that will help get back to your nice three-beats. 
So rhythm is the bottom of the training scale. It's what we always think of first. If you start having a problem with a rhythm, that's a big issue and you need to right away go back and fix it. Okay, level number two is suppleness. So this relates to the elasticity of the muscles and also the relaxation of the horse. So it's really important before you start training on your horse. And this is something that I focus on a lot in the warm up with my horse is that they are loose and supple and stretching and also mentally that they are in a good frame of mind where they are with me and able to focus on what I'm asking for. And sometimes it takes longer to get your horse supple than other days. Um, sometimes, you know, if you have an older horse, it may be more about getting their muscles loose. And if you have a younger horse, it might be more about getting them mentally in a relaxed frame of mind where you can start the training. The third level is connection. So connection is about acceptance of the bit and acceptance of the aids. So this is where we start to get into transitions. This is where we start to focus on getting the horse to accept the contact and come into that nice round frame, which is so important in dressage because that's where we start to get the back to lift and the top line really working. Then the fourth level is impulsion. And impulsion is, I think, a very misunderstood concept in the training scale. Impulsion actually refers to the amount of suspension in every stride and the amount of potential energy in your horse. So it's not about chasing your horse around. It's about really getting that loft in the stride and also that you feel like if you step on the accelerator that your horse really goes forward. The fifth level is straightness. Obviously, this is a really a challenge for all horses and riders because we as riders are crooked and our horses are crooked. So it's constantly working on getting yourself straighter and getting your horse straighter to get your horse even and also to get you as a rider more symmetrical. And then finally, once we've done all these things, we can work on collection. And collection really is the essence of dressage. It's getting those hind in to bend and sit and carry and the front end to lift. The, the thoracic sling muscles lift the withers up and the horses comes up in front. So that's just a little bit about the training scale. I have an entire six week course on the scale, which I will put in the comments, but it's really important to keep this in mind. This is the essence of the theory of dressage. When you're training every ride, every horse, no matter if you're a beginner or if you're riding a Grand Prix horse, this training scale is the essence of dressage. And then next slide, I wanted to show you a little bit. If you think about the exercises that we do in dressage, these exercises all fit into the training scale. So some exercises that work on rhythm and suppleness kind of at the bottom of the training scale. And again, this is all included in my training scale course, but serpentines are a great exercise to work on suppleness, turn on the forehand, leg yield, stretch circle, and tempo changes to help maintain the rhythm. So all of those things are exercises that we see in tests. And the reason that we do it is because it's working on this foundation of the training scale. It's working on getting our horse's muscles supple and loose and even, and also getting our horse relaxed and focusing and staying with us. So I think it will help you a lot if you understand the theory of dressage and why we do the things we do so that when you're riding, you have this in mind. Okay, next slide. This is an artistic representation that one of my students made in my Training Scale Masterclass course. And the beauty of the Training Scale is that it can be adapted to fit every horse and every rider's needs. So every horse is a little different and every horse will struggle a little bit more with one level of the Training Scale over another. So it's important to understand exactly how your horse fits into the dressage training scale and what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, and then some specific exercises that help you work on each level of the training scale. Okay, 
Next slide is the collective marks. So the collective marks are what the judge gives you at the end of your test, right? We've all seen those after you complete your test. You have five collective marks at training through fourth level. You don't have them anymore at the FEI levels, which I think is too bad. But I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I really think the collective marks are important because they're kind of a general overview of your test. They're a general takeaway of how the judge feels your test was, which I think is important. I think when you go into a show, you want to give a good impression of harmony and relaxation and that you're just prepared and happy to be there and your horse is happy to be there. So the collective marks are, the first one is gates, obviously. They give a score for the walk, trot, and canter, and that's the freedom and regularity of the gates. The second one is impulsion. So if you read impulsion, it's the desire to move forward, elasticity of the steps, suppleness of the back, and engagement of the hindquarters. So like I mentioned before, Impulsion is a complicated concept. It's not just about running your horse more forward. So it's about getting your horse supple first where their muscles are loose and movable and stretchable. The horse is not just stiff like a board. That's a component of impulsion. The desire to move forward. So the idea that when you ask, when you put your leg on, your horse really goes forward. And that's created by riding a ton of transitions. So if your horse doesn't desire to move forward, do not just chase them around the arena. You're going to want to do a lot of forward and back and transition so that when you put your leg on and your horse goes, then you take your leg off and reward your horse. And then engagement of the hindquarters. So when you send your horse forward, that they stay uphill balanced, that they don't go on the forehand, but that when you send them forward, I always think of a speedboat analogy. And if you've ever been on a speedboat, when that engine goes, the nose of the speedboat comes up and you just feel like the hind end of the speedboat driving you forward. So that's really what we want to feel as far as impulsion and our horse. Now the next collective mark is submission. I always think of impulsion as the hind end of the horse and submission as the front end of the horse. So the willing cooperation, harmony, attention, and confidence, acceptance of the bit and the age, straightness, lightness of the forehand, and ease of movement. So that's a lot. <laughs> but again, submission is a really important part of the training and when you're riding every day, thinking about that training, the willing cooperation of your horse, the harmony, how are you gonna get your horse to do what you want to do and be happy and willing about it and understanding really what you want. And then finally, we have two scores on rider position. So the first one is rider position and seat. And the second one is rider's correct and effective use of the eight. So like I started this lecture with, Rider position is a huge part of dressage and always coming back to and working on your position, which I know is really difficult. When I first started riding dressage, I was always the one that was riding the rank young horse that no one else wanted to ride. And it's hard, you know, it's easier when you're on a super well-trained horse to look good and to have the correct position. When you're riding a young, green, crazy horse, it's hard to work on your position, but it's also really important because if you're not in the correct position, you're more likely to fall off or give the incorrect aids or disturb the horse's balance. So uh, just keep going back. And I always think of it as like, get your horse right, think about your horse, then think about your position, then go back and think about your horse. And that really helps to kind of balance the two that you need to be thinking about your horse and working on your horse, but you also have to consider your position.
Okay, next slide is the half halt. And this is something that I think a lot of riders struggle with that I know you guys all always want to hear about. Comment below if you're one of those people that always wants to talk about the half halt. Um, it's really important before you even think about the half halt that you have your horse in front of the leg and that you have energy. Because if you don't have your horse going, if you don't have any energy, you have nothing to half halt. Basically what a half halt is, is a gathering of energy. It's not taking away energy. It's just simply gathering up all the horse's energy under your seat so that you can do something with it. Um, the something might be an extended trot. So it might be a forward movement. It might be a transition up to canter. The half halt also could be something like a corner coming up or a circle coming up or a half halt into a half pass. So a half halt is basically any time that you need to kind of get your horse's attention and say, hey, listen up, something's coming and organize your horse's body and energy for that next movement. So what the dots there in the slide denote is that the half halt is a balance between your seat, leg, and hand. It's kind of a little bit using all those things simultaneously. Now, different horses require different amount of each of those things. And it's also tricky, the half halt, because some horses on some days might need more leg and on other days might need more seat and hand. So in order to ride a good half halt, you have to really be a feeling rider. You have to be feeling what the horse needs when and able to give them the right ingredients for your half halt. So in general, a lazy horse will need more energizing half halts where your half halts are really like uh, hyper activating all the cells in their body so that you can do something with it. On a lazy horse, you're gonna use like quick little leg aids and kind of an activating from your seat and maybe less hand. On a horse that's hot, you're gonna use more seat in a way that settles down the energy and organizes the energy back to you. And then a little bit more hand to support what your seat is doing in the half halt. So, that's kind of my two minute elevator speech on half halts. I hope it helps you. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so the next slide is about contact and connection. And like I mentioned, this is the first workshop that we're doing in Amelia's Dressage Academy. The videos on contact and connection that you guys can start working on now are already posted. The Academy is hosted on a site called Teachable, which is an amazing site that I can upload videos and worksheets and quizzes and everything to. So contact and connection is such an important part of dressage training and dressage theory. And I know it's something that we as riders all struggle with. I do. I remember when I first started learning how to ride dressage, coming a little bit more from Western, and I was so frustrated by feeling like I was just pulling on my horse. And, you know, I had blisters and my arms and my shoulders were so sore and my horse was unhappy. So it's really a difficult concept to understand how to get your horse really round and supple over the top line without just pulling and kicking. So what the, those lines there denote that is that to really get connection, um, you want the energy to be flowing from the rider's leg through the horse's hind end. So when you put your leg on that, you get that hind end to engage and drive forward through the horse's hind end over the back, through the neck, through the bit and then back to the rider's hand. So that's basically the essence of connection. And when we train, there's a lot of roadblocks and evasions to getting that. So the first one being obviously that when you put your leg on, your horse doesn't go. Um, the second one is that often there's a blockage in the top line where the horse doesn't really want to use their back or their neck. And they are either because it's uncomfortable or they don't understand the contact. And then, of course, contact, just accepting the bit that when you put pressure on the bit, that the horse gives to the pressure of the bit. And that's, I think, where a lot of times we 
get a little lost in dressage is just understanding that like when you put pressure on the bit the horse should give to the bit and then of course all this relates to rider position and getting a good contact and connection is a lot about being in that correct position and having a good seat so I hope to see you guys all in the academy because it's going to be awesome. It's going to be really fun. We've already had a ton of people sign up and contact and connection is the first topic. Let me know what other workshops you want me to do and I will be sure to do them. But I hope this video was helpful to you. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And this it's so important to understand the theory of dressage. I've had a lot of people say, oh my gosh, my trainer doesn't teach me like this and I don't get any of this. And it's hard when you have 45 minutes and you need to teach someone a lesson to give them all this theory. So the academy is a great complement to your lessons and to your training that you start to really understand the theory of dressage and I think there should be like a whole college course about the theory of dressage and the system of dressage because it is an amazing system and if you follow the system it can adapt to different horses and it will help you to get there and to have direction to your training and your horse will appreciate it too. All right, that's it for today. Bye guys.